Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and give you guys some voiceovers. So like the old saying goes, when it rains it pours. So if you guys don't know, Takashi is definitely in over his head, even more so than the last time I did a video. So if you guys remember a few weeks ago, he was out there in LA. He had all these big burly black men around him. They were his security team. And so what they're saying now is that Takashi 69 owes them over $100,000. They're looking to be paid. They're saying that the security firm, they included armed guards who provided around the clock protection for him, three bulletproof SUVs, and the total came up to $97,165. Now that he's locked up, they're still looking to be paid. His booking agency is also demanding over 800k they're saying that this is what takashi 69 owes them for not performing and not doing his duties and then if you guys don't know he also managed to get two strippers knocked up and both of them are looking for child support even though neither one of their children are born yet okay so he has a lot of debt coming in but the crazy thing is when you mess with the feds and they get you under the RICO stature and stuff like that, what's going on now is that the feds have basically frozen his entire bank account, so much so that his poor mother might be evicted. He also had an account set up for his mother so that way, you know, she could take money out and do what she needed to do. The feds not only froze Takashi 69s account, but they also froze his mother's account. So this is what's being reported. It's being reported that the feds have really put a smackdown on 69 with the RICO case. So as we all know, once your account is frozen there's nothing you can do until the feds release that so with his accounts being frozen not only can he not pay his mother's rent her bills he can't pay the booking agency he can't play the security firm and most of all his lawyers may not be getting paid either so this situation is getting worse okay me personally i think what he should have done instead of flashing all that money and giving away all types of money you know which is nice to give money away and help other people he should have been smart with it instead of sitting here flossing all this money on social media what he should have done is bought his mother a modest home you know what i'm saying he could have bought her home for like three hundred thousand four hundred thousand something decent outside of new york you know out in the suburbs or whatever paid off so that way the only thing she'd have to worry about is just paying her utilities and property taxes but now because he wasn't smart with his money and he didn't pay off a home for her she's going to be struggling she's going to have to get up and go back to work and take care of herself because her son is not going to be getting out anytime soon so if you guys don't know yesterday he pled not guilty to the charges of racketeering um right now he's facing six charges and those six charges include not only racketeering but carrying a firearm assault with a deadly weapon and conspiracy to murder charges okay so he pled not guilty he went to court yesterday they said he came in there limping his attorney was saying that the reason why he was limping is because of the leg cuffs being too heavy and you know they were interfering with the way he walks or maybe he was just limping looking for sympathy but it's been announced that he has not been attacked so anyways he went into the courtroom yesterday his other co-defendants were there one of them being shoddy his former manager that he fired he was also there as well so they're basically saying that there's absolutely no love between takashi 69 and his former crew um they had him sitting apart from the other co-defendants um which makes sense because again if you guys have beef why would they have them sitting next to each other so they're saying like while the judge was talking and while the, the hearing was going on Takashi was looking up at the sky he refused to make any eye contact with his old crew um he wouldn't look at them at all and so now the craziest part is during the hearing um shoddy basically tells the federal judge in the middle of the hearing he says we don't fold we we don't bend, we don't break, it's Treyway. They're saying that when that came out of his mouth, Takashi 69 just looked crazy. He looked sick to his stomach. His skin got really pale. I mean, which makes sense because they're all fighting for their freedom. And you're sitting here basically proudly announcing that you are in a gang. This is a gang. We don't fall. We don't bend. You're basically talking shit to somebody who holds your life, the rest of your life in their hands. But I think that wasn't really a message for the judge. That was more so a message for Takashi because a lot of people are saying that Takashi, now that his back is against the wall, he's going to snitch he's gonna tell and especially being that he got moved from general population into a more secured facility with neutral people who are not in gangs which is funny coming from a guy who proclaimed to be a blood and all this other stuff which people like me who have common sense knew that everything he was saying and doing was just for show he was not a real blood he was a fake gangster i've been caught this out man, LA, man. Man. in the hood with them billy niggas and them hoover niggas you know what i'm saying we're up and we shooting niggas we ain't hooping niggas 
Thought it was a game, huh? Thought it was a game, huh? And now he's having to admit that in court. So they put him in like a segregated area. Um, so a lot of people said that the reason why he got moved is because he's snitching. But his lawyers have since come out and said that he has not snitched on anybody. But I think that when Shadi said that in the middle of the court case, that was a clear shot. That was a clear message to Takashi 69 okay? So now the craziest thing is this. Initially on Takashi 69s um Instagram, they had wrote this the other day and they said due to circumstances beyond our control, we have postponed the release of Takashi 69 Dummy Boy until further notice. Well, after they announced this a few days ago, the new album leaked online. So a lot of people have been listening to this new album. So then today, DJ Academics, he took to social media and basically he announced this to everyone. So DJ Academics took to Instagram and he says, Takashi 69's album, Dummy Boy, will be officially released in a few hours to all major outlets. This is the decision of Takashi himself, who despite being disappointed about its leak and his current situation, wants his fans to enjoy his music. He says he loves and misses the fans. So that's cute. DJ Academics is still talking to his, you know, friend. Um, so that's what he has to say. I know a lot of his fans are really excited about that situation. But now what's even crazier is this, right? So yesterday his lawyers came out and they were talking about the situation. And basically, you know, everything looked all good. Takashi pled not guilty. Even though the trial does not start until September, of 2019 they're still denying Takashi bail they don't want the 750,000 they don't want anything from him they want him to stay in jail because I'm assuming they're considering him a flight risk and plus they know a lot of people want to kill him so they're not going to let him out so he's gonna have to wait in jail until September which is insane as we all know New York City has one of the heaviest criminal caseloads in the country so that's why a lot of people when they end up going to jail you know they don't even get a chance to go to trial they end up pleading out they end up doing years in in jail because their criminal justice system out there is so slow because it's such a heavy load so basically this man is gonna have to wait in jail until September 2019 um, before his trial comes up they're saying that a lot of the co-defendants they may take it to trial or a lot of them may just take plea bargains so they don't even have to waste their time going to trial but Takashi definitely wants to take it to trial because he is saying that he has nothing to do with these guys he didn't know them back in 2013 so I want you guys to go ahead and check out what his lawyers had to say these are his real lawyers that previous lawyer like I stated before that that was somebody who basically snuck into the courtroom but here goes Takashi 69's real lawyers right here go ahead and check this out tonight about the man who calls himself Takashi 69 the rapper pleading not guilty to racketeering and firearms charges today in federal court in lower Manhattan the Brooklyn based rapper whose real name is Daniel Hernandez denied bail and his trial now set for next September Hernandez's popularity has skyrocketed over the past year but he's found himself constantly in trouble with the law. I'm outside uh, federal court here with the defense team for Daniel Hernandez, um, better known to many of hip hop fans around the world as Takashi 69 And we just had a very long hearing. He was arraigned on the charges along with the other co-defendants. And I want you to hear from the lawyers because there's been a lot of talk about what this is all about. And this is Mr. Lance Lazaro right here and Ms. Don Florio. And Lance, what do, what do you think about this case? I think it's a far-reaching indictment that Mr. Hernandez has very little involvement with other than basically using his uh, social media to promote his music. As far as being part of this Treyway blood gang, completely false. And I think that will come out in court um, when the facts are brought out. Now, in the court, paper, in the court papers, they talk about him meeting with them or incidents going back to 2013 but tell me why you have a problem with that date he doesn't know any he did not meet any of these individuals until september of 2017. i'm very proud of danny is that he's so he's brilliant he's a genius um and it's not just because of he is so like talented and he's turning out hit after hit it's because he knows how to market and like he said all that stuff on Instagram, all that blood association, it's to make money. But what does he do with his money? He gave over like a million dollars away. Who does that? I don't know any other rap store that's going to give away their money. Um, and he gives it to people who really need it because he knew where he came from. And what I'm so proud of is that way before this happened, he distanced himself from Trey, Trey Way. And you know that there's a big scandal that, um, you know, he unfollowed a lot of people and he distanced himself. And he was, he was around good people, because he's a good person. And I really believe that this um, young man has matured so much, not only because of this court process, just because he has transformed into a person who 
you know, just really loves God and wants to go back to the church. And he also just wants to be just live his life. All right, so you guys just saw what his real lawyer team had to say. Now, that was yesterday. But now, as of today, it's being reported that the feds have a snitch. And now it's causing his lawyers to worry. So this is what's being reported. They're saying Takashi 6 9 is still behind bars, hoping to get out on bail. But now he has something else to worry about. The feds are announcing that they have a snitch in the rapper's crew. TMZ broke the story. Takashi pled not guilty to his federal racketeering case on Monday. And a trial date has been set for September 4th. Things got potentially worse for him when the prosecutors revealed that they are working with a confidential informant who made recordings, presumably, of conversations with 6 9 Takashi's attorney, Lance Lazario, admits that it's a serious development in the case, telling TMZ, anytime there's a confidential informant, there's cause for concern. In court, prosecutors boasted that the recordings could send Takashi to prison for life. His lawyer is trying to be optimistic, though, saying, I'm confident that any recorded conversations with Takashi will prove that he was never a part of the enterprise and support the conclusion that he is innocent. So that is what the lawyer is having to say. So again, it's always somebody in your crew. It'd be the ones that you'd be the closest with, the ones that you think are, you know, really genuine and your friends who'd be low-key recording and doing all types of, you know, fuck shit. So right now, that's what Takashi's going through. So they have somebody in the crew who's basically snitching to the feds and busting him out. But on top of that, what they're also doing is that they're going to go through his social media. And as we all know, Takashi 69 used to post a lot of fuck shit on his social media, him with guns, him threatening people. Him. He's done a lot of shit himself to also get himself in a lot of hot water. So this is why I tell y'all, y'all have to be very, very mindful what you post on social media. You cannot say that that's your social media persona and then you're this person. They're not trying to hear that when it comes to a criminal case. What you put out there for public consumption can come back to bite you in the ass, okay? Now, according to Complex, they're saying that um, the prosecutors were also letting it be known not only do they have a social media search warrant for 6 9 but they also had one for Shadi's Instagram accounts as well and Shadi's Snapchat as well. In addition to all of that, they also have iCloud accounts for most of the defendants and others, plus email accounts, phone records, they have a plethora of information. The government is even saying that the information they have on this crew is so voluminous that they haven't had a chance to go through all of the evidence yet. So they definitely have a pile stacked against them, okay? So now I think that the most disturbing thing of all of this is what Charlemagne the God said today on The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God basically said that if Takashi 6 9 gets out, he wants to suck his dick. I mean, this dude has been suspect for a long time, but if this audio don't make you give Charlemagne the God the side eye, I don't know what will. Go ahead and check this out. Kids, this don't do it. Listen, it's not kids out there that it. still think XXX is still alive. Don't do it. Okay? Not worth it. If Takashi 6 9 guys, go ahead. If Takashi 6 9 beats this case, I'll suck his dick. You don't have to ask me. Shit. <laughs> Oh my god. This is creepy. Oh my god. Miko, all jokes aside, would you suck his dick? For what? All right, so you guys just heard what Charlemagne had to say. Like I said, this man is just so immature. Everything about him just screams attention horror and just screams that he plays for the other team. But then, but then as soon as people accuse him of that, he gets offended and he claims it's just a joke. But who jokes like that? Even if he was to get off, what grown straight man who's a father and who has a baby on the way, you know, even talks about sucking another grown man's peen. It's like, what the hell is wrong with this dude? That's why I can't take Charlemagne the guy seriously. Everything about him is just suspect as hell. Um, I doubt Takashi will get off, but even if he gets off, I mean, does that warrant sucking his dick? Hell, I'm a grown-ass female, and I'm not even interested in doing that shit. So what the hell is wrong with Charlemagne? Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation, honey. Once again, concerning Takashi 6 9 and all the drama and fuck shit that this man is literally involved in. Let me know your thoughts. All right. Deuces. Nikki! <laughs> hey, you guys. It's your girl, T, and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, Definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.